You know, as I look around me today, I wonder, where are the real men? Where are the young men whose hearts are full of zeal for God's glory? Where are the young men that are doing God's work, that are fulfilling His purposes? And I look around, and I don't see that. I see young men, but they're weak. They're the ones that sit back in the back pew at church, slouching down, looking disinterested. Where are the strong men, the real men, the courageous men? Where are the Caleb's? Where are the Joshua's? Who are the young men who will do and dare for God? You know, in the Bible, God refers to men as trees. As I look at trees, I find that some trees are very strong. The winds can push them and blow on them, but yet they remain erect and tall. Yes, they may sway, but they stay strong. I see other trees that are weak, that when they come under pressure, they bend, buckle, and yes, sometimes even break. There's different kinds of trees. For those of us who have studied trees here in America, we know that the hickory tree is one of the most resilient of all trees. You can bend it, you can make axe handles with it, you can make hoe handles with it, shovel handles. It's very resilient wood. It bends, but yet it stays strong. Now, other trees like the cedar tree, kind of a weak tree, or like the sumac tree, or like the pine tree. If we went in the woods over there, we would see a pine tree this big around that snapped off 20 feet off from the ground. And as I look at these trees, the Bible has given us these trees to illustrate how men are. You see, some men, as we look in Bible history, were strong. And when the winds of temptation came, they stood straight. And as we look at other histories in the Bible, we see men who were strong. Yet when the winds of temptation came, they bent and cracked. They were broken. Why are we as young men so weak? And I'm not just talking phys physically weak because yeah, you know, we may have strong muscles. We may be able to run and jump and do all those manly things. But if we look into our lives, we see that morally we're weak. What do I mean by morally weak? You know, as we look in the history of ancient Israel, as they went out and fought the battles of the Lord, while they were obedient to His commands, they were strong. They won those battles. They conquered the enemy. But when different individuals began to disobey God, and especially in the area of sexuality, as the Israelites began to indulge themselves in the sinful practices which God has forbidden, they became weak. And as they went out to fight the battles of the Lord, they were defeated. God could not bless them. God could not work with them. The strength they had was squandered by their sinful choices. And as you read this history, it makes me want to cry because we are following in the steps of ancient Israel. As the children of Israel were almost, they were about to enter into the promised land, Satan decided to stop them. And Satan knew if he could tempt the people to violate the principles of the seventh commandment, if he could tempt the children of Israel 
to indulge themselves in sexual sins, Satan knew that his purposes would be fulfilled. And so we know the story at Baal Peor, about ready to enter into the promised land. And here come the Midianite women, ready for a party. And the men who had been strong, who had been fighting the battles of the Lord, let down their guard and began to commit fornication with strange women. And what happened? They lost their strength. And you know, they were unable to enter into the Promised Land. You know, Satan is no different today. His plans and his tactics are the same. As a people, we are on the very borders of the Promised Land. We are about to enter the heavenly Canaan, the promised land. And Satan's plans are the same. If he can t successfully tempt the young men to indulge in sexual sins, he can keep the people of God out of the promised land. And as I look around, at the young men around me, as I look at my own life, I see that Satan has been very successful in tempting and leading young men into his snares. You see, God designed us as young men to be as strong as the hickory tree. God designed us to be able to withstand temptation. God designed that we could that the wind of temptations could blow and yet we would remain straight and tall. But sadly, we have not listened to God's voice. As a, as a general rule in our church, our young men are weaklings. And as I think about it, I can't help but cry. You know, as I think about the history of Samson, God created Samson as a strong tree. In fact, the strongest tree in the forest. And God had a very special work for Samson to do. The people of Israel were oppressed by their enemies. They were in bondage, in slavery. And God purposed to use Samson to deliver the children of Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. So Satan directed his attacks specifically towards Samson. Satan knew that if he could entice Samson to commit sexual sins, his strength would leave him. I want to read from Patriarchs and Prophets, page 600. Just as he, Samson, was entering upon manhood, the time when he must execute his divine mission, the time above all others when he should have been true to God, Samson connected himself with the enemies of Israel. At the time in our lives when we as young men should be the strongest in the Lord, at the time in our lives when we are mentally and physically capable of doing great things for God, we connect ourselves with God's enemies. And what do I mean by connecting ourselves with God's enemies? Now we know that Samson went in to a prostitute and in that way Samson connected himself with the enemies of God's people and Samson married a Philistine wife and in that way Samson connected himself with the enemies of God's people but as young men we're doing the same today 
when we view pornography, we are virtually doing just as Samson did in going in to the prostitute. It is the same in God's sight. As young men, we know that masturbation is wrong. The Spirit itself bears witness that this practice is life destroying but yet we indulge ourselves anyway and it's so easy to give in to Satan's temptations because these secret sins we can do them in secret so then we can go to church and sing our songs and teach our Sabbath school lessons and we can do all the, the good things and yet in the secret parts of our lives, we can commit great evil in God's sight. And this is precisely why the young men in my generation are so weak. As you masturbate, as you view pornography, you may not feel your physical strength drain away. But let me assure you, Though you may not perceive it, both your physical and your spiritual and your mental strength are draining away. You know, as we look at trees in the forest, we see the winds come, we see tornadoes come, and we see how some trees will stand tall and others will blow down under the strain, under the pressure of temptation. You know, as I look at my own life, I have to be honest and I have to admit that yes, I have fallen in this area. But there's hope for us. Samson is overcome by a craving to go in and indulge himself with a prostitute. And so he goes into the city, he goes into the prostitute, and his enemies say, ah, we caught him now. And they shut the massive gates. And we can imagine what's going on. You know, Samson, he knows what's right. He chooses to do wrong, but he silences his conscience and he goes anyway. And then, after the pleasures of sin for a season have kind of worn off, Samson comes to his senses. The Holy Spirit speaks to his heart and he realizes, I'm trapped. He realizes that he sinned against God. He realizes that he sinned against his own body. He realizes that without God's intervention, death is the sure result. So he pleads with God and he asks God to forgive him. And we see the mercy of God. We see how God forgives Samson. And we see the evidence of God's forgiveness in the fact that Samson goes to those strong gates, picks them up out of their hinges, and carries them all the way on top of the hill and drops it. And so, wherever you may be today, no matter what secret sins you've committed in the past, this story gives us hope. We see that God will forgive. If God had not forgiven Samson, when Samson asked for forgiveness there inside the city, he would have been killed that night. But God had mercy upon him. God said, I forgive you, Samson. I'm going to give you another chance. And so the Spirit of God came on Samson and he had strength to break free. And the same is true today. Whatever your past may be, whatever secret sins you may have committed, when you hear the Spirit of God speaking to your heart, 
and you, you feel that shame and that guilt and you realize that your strength is gone, when you realize that death is the consequence for your sin, when you cry out to God, He'll forgive you. He'll flood your body with strength once again so that you can escape the hand of the enemy like Samson did. Satan would, would like to destroy all the trees in the forest. Satan would like to knock out all the young men in the church. But this is impossible while we as young men are yielded to Christ. And as we look at the history of Samson, we see 20 years in which Samson was a judge of Israel, in which Samson was a champion of Israel. But once again, Samson yielded to temptation. He connected himself with a young woman who did not love and serve God. And as Samson hardened his heart once again in choosing to do what was wrong, we know that eventually Satan gained the mastery over Samson. Samson was the strongest, weakest man. Samson yielded to temptation and the greatest tree in the forest crashed down. This is a solemn warning for us as young men. I would like to read once again from Patriarchs and Prophets. Had Samson been true to his divine calling, the purpose of God could have accomplished, have been accomplished in his honor and exaltation. But he yielded to temptation and proved untrue to his trust. And his mission was fulfilled in defeat, bondage, and death. My brothers in Christ, the question comes to us. Is our life going to end in defeat, bondage, and death? If we go on the living, living the way that we're living, our life will, de will end in defeat, bondage, and death. Physically, Samson was the strongest man upon the earth, but in self-control, integrity, and firmness, he was one of the weakest of men. Many mistake strong passions for a strong character, but the truth is that he who is mastered by his passions is a weak man. The real greatness of man is measured by the power of the feelings he controls, not by those that control him. So as we think of this story, of this history of Samson, it makes us sad because Samson was not what he could have been. But you know, none of us can change our past. But as young men, we have Many of us have years ahead of us. And though our past record is not clean, God can wipe that away. He can change that. Reading once again from page 606 in Patriarchs and Prophets. The very one, the very ones whom God purposes to use as his instruments for a special work, Satan employs his utmost power to lead astray. Did you catch that? That is so powerful. The very ones whom God purposes to use as his instruments for a special work, Satan employs his utmost power to lead astray. My brothers, God has purposed to use you to do a special work for Him. So that means that you are the very one whom Satan will concentrate his most fierce efforts against. He will bring his most subtle temptations to try to thwart the
the purposes of God. Satan does not want God to use you in his work. The very ones whom God purposes to use as his instruments for a special work, Satan employs his utmost power to lead astray. He attacks us at our weak point, working through defects in the character to gain control of the whole man. If Satan can control you on one point, he knows that sooner or later he will have control of the whole man. He knows that if these defects are cherished, he will succeed. But none need be overcome. Man is not left alone to conquer the power of evil by his own feeble eff efforts. Help is at hand and will be given to every soul who truly desires it. Angels of God that ascend and descend the ladder which Jacob saw in vision will help every soul who will to climb even to the highest heaven. You know, God promises in His Word in the book of Isaiah chapter 42 Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 16, God promises, And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them, and not forsake them. You know, as we saw this morning, the small tree, as the pressure increased, as the strain increased, the tree bent. It bent to the ground. Just like we do when we yield ourselves to Satan's temptations. That tree is not now standing strong, straight, and tall. That tree is now bent earthward. But you know, the same God who created the hickory tree can also straighten the hickory tree. The same God that formed us as strong young men can also straighten us. Our lives are crooked, there's no question about it. But praise God, He's promised he'll make crooked things straight. He will wipe away your past. He'll wipe away my past. He'll clean up the past record. And if we yield ourselves to him today, if we yield ourselves to him throughout the day, we will go from one victory to the next. The Bible says we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. All power is given to Jesus in heaven and earth. And when we allow Jesus to be the king of our life, he gives us that power too. God says in Isaiah chapter 118, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. We all experience guilt and shame because we think of all the failures that we've made. We think of all the, the ways in which we've hurt God. We think of the, the, how we've disobeyed God and we think of how we've turned our backs on God and followed our own perverse will. And we feel that guilt and shame. But Jesus promises to take that all away. He promises to clean us up, to give us a, a spotless record. Why? Because Jesus took those sins on himself. So, how, we, how in a practical way, how may we be set free? 
of these powerful temptations, masturbation and pornography. How is this possible? The Bible tells us, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. How can we overcome sin? The first step is thanking God that He has given the victory through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ successfully met every temptation. Never once did Jesus yield Himself to temptation. Samson was a strong tree in the forest, but Jesus is the strongest tree in the forest. And it's by His power that we grow strong in Him. So number one is thank God for the victory He's already given you. And number two, when you're struggling with these secret sins, the Bible says, confess your faults one to another, that ye may be healed. Find a brother in Christ, a brother, a real brother in Christ, or your pastor, someone who you can trust, or your father, someone that you can trust, and tell them about the struggle you're going through. Tell them about the struggle that goes on because you, you want to do what's right, but yet you're, you're tempted so strongly to do wrong. And be honest, be real. Share your struggles. And when we are united, Satan's power is limited. So work with your brothers in Christ. Ask them to uplift you in prayer, and believe me, victory is possible. We're ashamed because we're kind of like Adam, and we, we want to hide our, our sin, we want to hide our problems, and we kind of go in the bushes and hide. But we must be honest with ourselves, and we must be honest with our Christian brothers about the struggles that we face. And it, like the Bible says, confess your faults one to another that ye may be healed. As we become honest with God, honest with ourselves, and honest with our Christian brothers, Satan's power is broken. These secret sins thrive in the dark. They, they thrive in the secret part of your life where no one sees. Expose them to the light. That's what it means to walk in the light. Don't hide. Open your heart in a private place to a Christian brother and you will find that Satan's power slowly fades away. God wants to give you the victory. He will give you the victory. We're more than conquerors through Him that loved us. The strong trees of the forest do not gain strength by their own severe efforts. The tr strong trees of the forest gain their strength by receiving the gifts that God gives them, by receiving the rain, by receiving the sunshine, by receiving the minerals through their roots. Each day they grow a little stronger and a little stronger and a little stronger. And just in the same way, we may receive the good gifts of God. We may, we may receive His Spirit and be strengthened by His might in the inner man. God can make us strong young men that we would know Him and be strong and do exploits. He has a work for us to do. And as we overcome sin, God can do that work through us. May God bless you, young man. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might.